Hello, I'm Michael from Holy Spirit Activism. I love Catholics and I love Jews, but I don't agree with them. And it turns out that now the Catholic Church has sort of made a statement where they say that Jews can be saved and enter heaven without believing in Jesus. Now, it's 50 years uh, since a very influential Catholic document was released. It's called Nostra Aetate in Latin, and it's a quite short document. It deals with the Catholic view of other religions and it pays special attention to Jews. Now, obviously, the Catholic Church has persecuted Jews a lot during history and during the Holocaust. The Catholic response wasn't ideal, to put it mildly, and uh, Jews are obviously very upset about this. Anyway, uh, it um, goes against anti-Semitism and departs from anti-Semitism and says that it's stupid, which it is, and some other good things. Now, um, this year, 2015, the Catholic Church has released a much longer document, which is called The Gifts and the Calling of God are Irrevocable, and it deals specifically with Jews, um, not other religions, as the former document did. And it draws some conclusions and that are pretty radical and uh, unbiblical. So, as many news reports have stated, the Catholic Church and the now say that uh, they should not try to convert Jews on an institutional level. Um, they even say in the document, and I quote, um, in concrete terms, this means that the Catholic Church neither conducts nor supports any specific institutional mission work directed towards Jews. Now, why don't they? The reason is that they think that Jews can be saved without believing in Christianity. And still they claim that Jesus is the only way to the Father and it's only through Jesus' death on the cross that we gain salvation. How do you combine those two thoughts? Well, you can't. And they themselves say that this is a paradox or a mystery. That the Jews are participants in God's salvation is theologically unquestionable, but how that can be possible without confessing Christ explicitly is and remains an unfathomable divine mystery, says the text. So this is um, an example, I would say, of extreme liberal theology in the Catholic Church. The problem with the Catholic Church is that they suddenly can change their mind about stuff. And they often claim that this is something that is um, unique or at least a characteristic of the Protestant movement. But we see this time and again when it comes to the Catholic Church. Like, take the doctrine about seven sacraments, that there are not more nor less than seven sacraments. Um, that doctrine was um, basically made up uh, in the uh, 12th century, I think, uh, possibly 11th, uh, by a guy called Peter Lombard, a uh, French Catholic theologian who thought that, hmm, these sacraments, they, there are probably seven, and then they listed them, and a few hundred years later it was official Catholic doctrines in the Council of Trent, they say that whoever believes that there are more or less than seven sacraments is anathema, they are condemned. And this is again an example of how the Catholic Church suddenly, after millennia of persecution um, towards Jews and towards Protestants and, and other people that they don't agree with, suddenly they say, you know what, Jews get saved now without Jesus. Now, obviously, it's great that they go against anti-Semitism. It's great that they don't persecute Jews anymore. That is awesome, because Christians should never, ever use violence against other people. Um, but there's a problem here when you view um, departing from anti-Semitism as the same thing as suddenly saying that Jews get to heaven. I mean, an atheist wouldn't say that a Jew 
goes to heaven when they die because an atheist doesn't believe in heaven. But this does not mean that an atheist is, per definition, anti-Semitic, you know? You don't have to say that, yeah, you are saved, you go to heaven, there's no problem, I don't need to lead you to salvation just because you don't want to kill them. And this is so basic and so obvious. Now, this document uh, goes into detail, especially in Romans 9 to 11, and I don't have time to work this through in detail, but I want to recognize that in chapter 10, um, in this Bible passage, um, Paul says, from verse 1 and onwards, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their seal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. And then in verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And obviously we see in the book of Acts how Christians passionately were sharing the gospel uh, with the Jews. Um, most of the early Christians were Jews themselves, the apostles were Jews, and so they of course longed for their Jewish brothers and sisters to discover the liberty and the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. They were definitely investing a lot in mission work toward Jews. Now to be clear, um, the word institutional that this Catholic document use is quite important for them because the Catholic Church is all about institutions. They do add, um, while there is a principal rejection of an institutional Jewish mission, Christians are nonetheless called to bear witness to their faith in Jesus Christ, also to Jews, although they should do so in a humble and sensitive manner, acknowledging that Jews are bearers of God's word, and particularly in view of the great tragedy of the Shoah, that is, the Holocaust. So the Catholic Church does recognize that they can't um, ban <laughs> individual Catholics from, um, from leading uh, Jewish people to Christ and from sharing the gospel uh, with them, uh, which is good, I guess, um, but this approach of being proud of not having any institutional mission work toward a particular group is not really compatible with following uh, the Great Commission of Christ to lead all people um, to Him. It's extremely obvious in the Bible that the early Christians uh, shared the gospel with Jewish people and led Jewish people to Christ. And we see this time and again. Uh, even today I just reading uh, Charisma News about a, a revival in Israel with Sid Roth, um, who is a, a charismatic a Jewish Christian, uh, whom I don't agree with uh, on his views on the, the political uh, conflict in Israel-Palestine, but I do recognize his seal uh, to lead Jewish people to Christ. And there were actually, uh, I think, over a thousand people Jewish people that accepted Christ on his meeting and there were many healings and so on. So this is happening and in the movie Father of Lies we see how God is ministering among uh, Jews and, and Muslims in Jerusalem. Um, this is obviously something that God wants. Why wouldn't God uh, want Jewish people to, to recognize his son as the Messiah? So I think there's a big problem that the Catholic Church has uh, add this institutional word to go from the scripture, obviously it leaves a, a room for them to say, well, we're not acting unscriptural, you know, it's still possible for individual Catholics to lead uh, Jewish people to Christ. Um, but when they say this, that they don't want any institutional mission work towards Jews and they don't even um, support it, you know, they, they don't even um, uh, like the idea of doing so, they are saying something about how Jesus isn't necessary uh, for this particular group um, to be saved. And that is totally unbiblical. Um, it's very safe to say that Paul's point was not that Jews don't need Christ, as I read here in the 
um, scripture passage is extremely clear that he thinks that is so. And when he later says um, that there is a secret about all Israel being saved in um, chapter 11 in Romans, verse 25 and 26, um, there is nothing to suggest that that does not include that Israel actually accepts Christ because that is Paul's concept of salvation, to be saved, to be righteous before God, is to accept Christ and receive him as your Lord and Savior and confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that he rose from the dead. Um, so my comment to this is that I definitely think that the Catholic Church is heading towards uh, the wrong path. I think that this is yet another example of them opening for liberal theology because this is what it is. This is when you change the biblical message to something else just to be politically correct and, and to adapt to you know modern society and whatsoever. And usually I'm very skeptical to when people say, oh look the Catholic Church is opening for the New World Order and, and uh, New World Religion and so on because most of those claims have no substantial support, they're just conspiracy theories. But here we have an actual example of how the Catholic Church discourages at least institutional mission toward another religion. And that is extremely disturbing because it means that people will get lost unless some good old apostolic Protestants go to the Jews instead. And of course, I totally support that. I support and I hopefully will conduct institutional apostolic mission even towards Jewish people. Thank you for watching and God bless you. Peace,